بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters and friends and welcome to the third episode of our Dhul Hijjah series The Shepherd's Way Now the third timeless leadership lesson brothers and sisters is a leader loved is a leader followed The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best of your leaders are those whom you love and who love you and who invoke Allah's blessings upon you and you invoke his blessings upon them and this is an authentic hadith narrated by Muslim now given that's a reality we should ask ourselves the following question how do we become leaders that are loved there are three things that we have to internalize, adopt, and actualize. Number one, we need to be empathic. Number two, we need to be compassionate and committed to people's well-being. Number three, we need to consult people in our affairs. So what does it mean to be empathic brothers and sisters? It means we have to seek people's context. We have to imaginatively feel what they feel. This is extremely important when it comes to engaging with team members or other human beings because it allows us to be in the right space to be able to connect with people because we're seeking the context and we are imaginatively trying to feel what they're feeling. In other words, we are taking our shoes off, putting on their shoes and walking a few steps. And the reason this is very important because once you understand people's context, once you understand people's feelings, once you understand people's intellectual, social, spiritual, and emotional context, the way you relate to them will be profound because you'll be relating to who they are, as they are, and you won't be relating to your own judgments of who they are. This is extremely important with regards to developing empathy and establishing profound relationships, brothers and sisters. So what does it mean to be compassionate and committed to people's well-being? Well, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه You won't truly believe unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And this hadith is in the famous collection of the 40 ahadith of an nawawi the Arba'een of an nawawi And an nawawi comments on this hadith and he says that this basically means that you want goodness and guidance for your brother and for your brother in humanity. Interestingly, this is reflected in another hadith that is narrated by Bukhari and you can find it in Tariq al-Kabir where the Prophet sallallahu said, love for the people, love for humanity, we love for yourself. And the Arabic is, Linnas. It's not akhihi like the other hadith. It is linnas for the people, for humanity. So the Prophet ﷺ is basically telling us that we must love for others what we love for ourselves. And in the context of the classical understanding, in other words, the understanding of an nawawi and also the scholar Ibn Taqiq al Eid. They basically said that we must be committed to the well-being of other people. In other words, we want goodness for people and guidance for people. This is extremely important, brothers and sisters. We must ooze this. It must manifest in our way of being that we are sincere in our commitment to the well-being of the people that we're leading. That we want true goodness for them and true guidance for them. And from this perspective, we could also develop a principle which is an Islamic principle. In actual fact, it's a moral principle in Islam, which is, it is better to err in mercy than it is to err in harshness. The default position should be mercy and the thing that you fall back on all the time is the merciful and compassionate approach. So what does it mean to consult brothers and sisters? There's a beautiful verse in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 159 that summarizes the compassionate and soft-hearted nature of the Prophet wasallam, but also his leadership style with regards to consultation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is out of Allah's mercy that you, O Prophet, have been lenient with them. Had you been cruel or hard-hearted, they would have certainly abandoned you. So pardon them. 
ask Allah's forgiveness for them and consult with them in conducting matters. Once you make a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who trust in Him. This is an extremely beautiful verse, especially if you understand the context. Because the context of this verse is in the context of the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud. What was the Battle of Uhud? Brothers and sisters, the Battle of Uhud was a perceived loss because of a tragic mistake of some of the companions that they didn't listen to the Prophet Sallallahu properly. And this is not any old mistake. It's not coming to work late or not fulfilling this month's targets. It was a tragic mistake that led to the injury of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also the death of Hamza Radiallahu An, his beloved uncle. And obviously to the death of Sahaba. And in this context, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was soft and kind to those who made that tragic mistake. Look at the compassion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many leaders tell off their followers or their people when they don't fulfill certain targets? But what happened at the Battle of Uhud is far worse. And look at the soft-hearted nature of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not only that, Allah tells him to forgive them. And Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask Allah for their forgiveness. Not only that, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to consult them in his affairs. Think about how important consultation is. To the degree that Allah advises the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to consult the Sahaba in his affairs even though there was a tragic mistake which shows the importance of consultation in empowering your followers. So brothers and sisters, consultation is so significant. The reason consultation is significant is because from our perspective, obviously the Prophet ﷺ had divine guidance. But from our perspective, we don't have knowledge of everything. We have blind spots. From our perspective, brothers and sisters, we need experts or we need other people's perspectives so they could give us different ways of seeing the same thing in order for us to have a complete picture or to be able to make the right decisions. And consultation is so important that it's throughout our tradition, brothers and sisters. For example, in a hadith narrated by At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, one who is consulted is in a position of trust. And the importance of consultation, brothers and sisters, is further mentioned in the Qur'an in chapter 42, verse 38, when Allah says, who respond to their Lord, establish prayer, conduct their affairs by mutual consultation, and donate from what we have provided them. And this is in the context of Allah saying that what is with Allah is far better because in the previous verse, not verse 37 but verse 36, Allah says, but what is with Allah is far better and more lasting for those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. So if you want this long lasting reward, if you believe and put your trust in your Lord, then as th verse 38 says, conduct the affairs by mutual consultation. In other words, you need to engage in consultation. So brothers and sisters, if you want to be a leader that is loved, then you need to be empathic, be compassionate and committed to people's well-being, and consult them in your affairs, in the affairs of the team, of the group, or the organization. So this is the end of episode three, brothers and sisters. But just to remind you again, we are experiencing the blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. And as you know, and we've said this before, that the deeds performed in these blessed days are more rewardable than deeds performed during the days of Ramadan. So brothers and sisters, we ask you to support Sapiens Institute, this organization that sees a world where everybody receives the message of Islam. And the way we want to achieve that is by focusing on people, 
developing and empowering them to be able to share Islam academically and intellectually. If you're touched, moved and inspired by this vision and strategy, then please donate now. Go to the button or the link below and donate a generous donation, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.